Nightingale is a massive open world survival game that you can play solo or with up to six friends, built by a team including former Bioware devs. In this video, I'm going to tell you absolutely everything you need to know to play and enjoy Nightingale. If this is the first time you're hearing about Nightingale, stick around to see gameplay and find out what it's about. You can support my channel by using the link in the description to get the game right now. Nightingale enters early access on February 20th for Steam and Epic, and it's only $30. Massive shout out to Inflection Games for sponsoring this video. All right, so the first thing that you're going to have to do is create your profile. Calls them profiles. You can have multiple profiles or multiple characters in this game, and you can play with friends. So you can have one profile that you play by yourself. You can create another profile, and you can play that profile with friends or vice versa. So we're going to go ahead and make one. The character creation has a ton of options. We're going to go ahead and skip through all of them here and let you make those choices on your own. It's mostly cosmetic flavor options. A cutscene is going to play, but we're going to go ahead and skip all cutscenes and story dialogue. We're not going to spoil anything for you guys and you're gonna spawn into the world you've got puck whispering into your ear he's gonna be kind of like your little guide on this adventure leading you to the next destination and the next thing that you need to take care of you can hear that there's a lot of turmoil around you and stuff and this kind of sets the stage for you leaving this place and kind of going through this portal ahead and entering this first realm we finally meet puck he's gonna go ahead and give us some cards and uh, this is what we've got here the realm card machine you can see here we've got a forest card and a byway card so a biome card and a major card. This is going to be a big part of the game. And there's a few different biome cards you can get, such as desert, forest, swamp, right? So we're going to put that in. And then your major card is going to tell you more details about that biome. And you're going to be able to collect lots of different major cards and you'll be able to craft different major cards and you'll be able to craft different biome cards so that you can specifically choose what kind of a realm you want to go and explore next. So we'll put that there, open the portal, and this is going to start preparing a portal. Look out for these things release hope echoes these are going to be hidden throughout the game there's little bits of lore little bits of flavor and uh, generally something that you're going to want to grab now these mobs are going to come running after us we're going to run into the next realm now as i mentioned you're going to be able to play with your friends in this game but you won't be able to play with your friends until after you've completed the tutorial so you'll have to complete the tutorial and they'll have to complete the tutorial and then they'll be able to join your realm or you'll be able to join their realm and the cool thing about this game being an always online game is even when you you're not online, they'll still be able to play in your realm and vice versa. So they don't have to rely on you being up and present and playing for them to be playing in your world. We're going to go ahead and speak with Puck. And he's basically going to give us objectives here to do, teaching us the basics of how you craft and everything in this game. The first one is to collect some berries because you do have to eat in this game. So berries are automatically going to fall into the left side. If we look at the UI here, we can go over some of the basics that are going to be really important to know while you're playing this game. Okay, so it's worth noting that I just got word from the devs that they've completely overhauled the UI. So the information I'm giving you is good information about how the game's mechanics work, but the UI is going to look different on your end when you're playing. So don't panic if it looks different. The information is the same. The presentation is perhaps just a little bit different on the new UI. Okay, now let's continue. So I'm going to open up my inventory just so that I can move my cursor around. You can see what I'm pointing at here. So on the left side here, this is going to be kind of your secondary items like your food, your potions, your umbrella, these types of non-combat, non-harvesting things are going to go over here in these spots. They're automatically going to go there or you'll be able to drag them out of your inventory and into your offhand slots. The right side, these are your main hand slots. So this is where your pickaxe is going to go. This is where your weapon is going to go, your sling bow, right? Whatever you choose to put here, whether it's a rifle or some kind of tool for harvesting, it's going to end up in slots one through five. Then in the middle here, we've got a lot of important information. This is our health right here, that 50. And then on the right side it says 35 that's our stamina so we've got full stamina and full health right now and then there's a gauge going around the health this is your hunger gauge this red gauge here so if i eat this berry right here i'm gonna go ahead and consume it that gauge went up a little bit and it also gave us a food buff so these three circles to the left of your hunger gauge are your food buffs so you can have three different food buffs up at a time so it's nice to try to vary the different foods that you eat so you can kind of alternate between a few different types of food and that way you always have a few different buffs going. As you can see, for raw blueberries, we're 
going to be getting maximum stamina and hunger mitigation for 300 seconds. So if you cook things or if you grab meat and you cook that, you're going to get better buffs, right? The more work you put into a meal, generally the better the buffs are going to be consuming it. Then there's this gauge over here on the right side. This is going to be your rest gauge. So you will have a sleeping bag in this game or a bed roll or whatever you want to call it. Eventually you'll be able to craft an actual bed and you're going to rest in it. And that's going to fill this gauge up. You can do a quick rest anytime you want just by interacting with it. No time really passes in their day, but this gauge just fills up when you interact with it and your character lets out this nice yawn and the sigh of relief. If it goes to nighttime, you can actually sleep in the bed and pass time until the next morning. I've got this hungry warning coming up on screen now telling me, hey, you're hungry. You need to eat. So one of the things we're probably going to want to do here is acquire more blueberries because I'm standing here talking while my hunger gauge is going down. And in the top right, you can see the journal entry is there. Those are my quests that I'm setting out to complete. Anytime there's something up there, it's definitely something that you should eventually try to do either now or after you complete the other thing that's up there that you're trying to do, right? Those are very much priority items for you to take care of. Right now it says acquire rocks, acquire sticks and acquire raw berries. So we're going to do that. These are things that you can find just on the floor, fortunately since we don't have any tools yet. So berries are going to look like this. When you grab a plant, that's just going to give you fiber. And on the bottom left side of the screen, you'll see a running log of the things I'm picking up. Here, let me pick something else so it lights up. So it says plus two plant fiber and then crude and then three. So what that means is I just picked up two plant fibers and there's lots of different plant fibers. The better the plant fiber, the higher the quality of the item that you create. So crude is the lowest, right? That means if I craft an item using the crude plant fiber, it's going to give me the lowest gear score possible, which early on is perfectly fine. It's not until later that you're going to look for better versions of plant fiber like hemp so that you can create higher gear score items. And then the number to the right there, it says this one here, two sticks, crude five. The five at the end is how many I am carrying total. So it, that way you always know how many you have in your inventory. So you know kind of where you stand if you're trying to grab a certain amount to complete an objective or to craft your next item for your house, whatever it is. That's kind of how you read. It. it tells you how many you picked up and how many you have total. Very handy down there. The other thing that is on the screen right now, you've got a compass up there at the top, south, east, north, west, right? It's going to tell you your general directions. And if you have a home or a cairn, as this game calls it, it's going to help you know which direction that's in. We'll get to that in a moment. And that basically sums up everything you need to know about what's on screen right now. So we'll keep going. Grab some more of these berries. OK, we're done with berries. Now we just need some rocks. And in this game, you can pick up rocks by finding rocks rock piles on the floor like these ones right here. Hey, we got them. And now it says build a campfire easy enough. So we'll go ahead and do that. This is just a tutorial. So we're not going to put too much thought into where we're putting this stuff. We're just going to get it done. And like it says, you can use your campfire to cook, refine or craft items. We'll be doing all of those things in this guide to make sure you understand all of them. Now it says acquire roasted berries. So we get to cook our first item. So in order to cook, all you have to do is come here. You can click and choose the item that you want to put in there, right? This is especially useful when you have multiple items of different qualities. So sometimes there will be a recipe over here on the left and you'll click here and you'll have multiple options that will fulfill it. Some are like I was talking about the fiber earlier. It says crude and then something else will be a higher quality and you can choose the higher quality one when you want the higher quality results or you can choose the lower quality one when you don't care about the quality of the result. Right now, all we've got is berries. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It says manage fuel. So you do have to give your fire fuel. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull Put some of this in here. We'll ignite it and says we've got three minutes of fuel, which is more than enough for what we're trying to do here. And we're going to craft. There we go. And now it says eat the roasted berries. As you can see down there, the roasted berries automatically got slotted into our offhand. So we're going to go ahead and eat those. Done. Now it says return to Puck, who, well, he came to us. Perfect. And he's saying, OK, great. Good job. You're done with this place. Now go to the next area. So we come here and we use realm cards once again. This time we're going to use a desert card so you can see what a desert biome looks like. We're going to use another byway card, which is basically saying it's going to be a small transient realm. Basically, it's one it's a small little realm you're going to go into and pass through, which is worth noting. This realm that I'm in right now is very, very small. Later on, we'll find much, much bigger realms. But these are transient realms. All right. So we're in a desert realm. There's a hot meter going up right now. This is a good time to talk about this meter. It's going to appear on your screen a lot in this game, whether you're getting wet, whether you're getting hot, right? There'll be a meter filling like that. And depending on
depending on what the meter is, you can do something to negate it. So in this case, I just had to get in the shade and out of the sun to stop that hot meter from filling up. If it was raining, I could pull out my umbrella to stop the wet meter from going up. When it fills all the way up, you'll get some kind of a debuff for a time. So now he's taught me how to build a stick tent. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and right here, survival. We need plant fiber. So we're going to go ahead and oh, yeah, I just used all my plant fiber at the last place and I forgot to take the plant fiber out of the cooking thing. All of it is still there. So let's go up ahead and grab some more plant fiber and along the water here, we'll be able to find plenty of fiber. Go ahead and grab a little bit extra here because I know we're going to need it for a few things. And it says build a stick tent. Sure. Place. There we go. Put it down. And now it says build the bedroll that I was telling you guys about earlier. So there it is. Bedroll. Put this in here. Easy as pie. So the way that building in this game works is you click on the item that you want to build and then you click place and you can lay out like your whole base, right? You can put, you know, this item here, this item here, and you hold down the interact button. You can move it. You can copy it. If you want to make another one, you can deconstruct it. If you decide you don't want it there anymore. And there's some other really useful information that you can see here. One of the most important pieces of information in this menu right here is going to be under the notes section. And it's this line right here. I have built this before. So while you're playing, you're going to constantly be unlocking new things to build and it won't be until you build those things that you'll unlock the next tier of items you can make, the next tier of things that you can craft, right? So you'll have lines and lines of things that you've made and you'll be like, man, I don't remember if I made that or not yet. And well, this is how you check right here, notes, notes, and then look at this line. I have built this before, or if you haven't built it before, it'll say, I have not built this before. A little suggestion from me to the devs would be to put like a little check on the top of the card if it's been made or something that just makes it easier to see at a glance so you don't have to switch over to info mode to see if you've made something or not before. It would be really nice if it was just here on the cards, because later on we have so many of the cards and you have to flip through a lot of them and go through the notes and the info. It could just be a little bit easier to track that. All right. And now it says makeshift mining pick. I just got some new discoveries because I've crafted these things, right? And in the top right, it's telling me to craft a makeshift wood axe, a makeshift mining pick, makeshift hunting knife, right? Basically all our basic gathering tools that we're going to need for the rest of this game. So we're going to do that. We're going to come here into the crafting menu instead of the building menu and crude items. This is your most rudimentary forms of all these items. Like any survival game, if you've played it before, you're very familiar with this process. So we're going to make all of these things. So craft a makeshift. We'll go left right here. We're going to make them all because we're going to need them all. What do we need? We need more rocks. It looks like that's the thing we're short on. So let's go ahead and gather some rocks over here. So as you're going through the tutorial, make sure to grab lots of rocks, sticks and fiber. If you see a pile of those on the ground early on, it's going to be worth it to grab it so that you don't have to circle back like I'm doing right now to get these things for you. OK, so let's craft the rest of these here. And there we go. We've crafted our first set of harvesting tools. Now, these are the most basic ones. There's some really important information that we can see right off the bat. The six in the top left is the gear score of that item. So the higher that number is, the better. Gear score six is pretty much I, th I think this is the lowest you'll ever see in this game. And that makes sense because this is your crude items. Eventually, you're going to be crafting items that start out at level 20 base and then 40 base and so on. Now, already you can see that we're collecting a lot of various things. Some of these we're going to need a lot of and some were not, especially early on, like this flower. I don't need a lot of this right now. I'm not too concerned about it. So what I can do when I have materials that I don't need, I can extract it to get essence dust. See, when I hover over it, it says result would be 48 essence dust. So we click that. You can do all of it, some of it or none of it. We're going to do all of it for now. And that's given me a bunch of essence. Essence is one of this game's currencies. We can click here on the essence tab and we can see here essence. There's multiple different tiers of essence of different colors. So there's going to be this gray common essence and there's going to be a green then a blue, then a purple essence, right? It has different tiers and each tier allows you to interact with and do better things with it. The primary purpose for a common essence is going to be repairing your gear. So your gear is eventually going to take damage while you take damage and while you use it like your pickaxe, use it enough, eventually you're going to have to repair it. And that's going to consume some essence every time you do that. So that's going to be one of the big things you use essence for. You're also going to use essence to purchase recipes so that you can craft better items, right? These recipes and these schematics are going to be really important and you're going to use essence to buy your first batch of them. And then the next tier of schematics is going to cost the green essence instead of the gray essence, right? It's going to cost the better stuff, right? So as you progress, you'll find better and better essence and that's going to unlock better and better items for you. All right. 
now it says return to puck. So let's go over here to this. I have a feeling he is going to want to meet us here. Here's a, another echo. When you get these echoes, there's a nice little bit of lore. You can read this if you'd like to. Here's Puck. And he's saying, hey, it's time to head to the next place. So we're going to use, there's the wet meter, by the way. Uh, see this? I stand in the water. The wet meter is going up. And down here it says, what? Your rate of stamina regeneration is reduced, right? So we don't want that. Stamina regeneration being reduced is, well, it's like any game. It's fairly annoying when that's the case. It means you can't harvest your resources like using your axe or your mining pick, right? it'll consume it as you can see every swing consumes some of my stamina down there in the bottom and so we've got to be wary of that now we're going to go to a swamp and it's going to be a byway major card it's going to be byway again which means it's going to be just a small transient realm again that's because these are just tutorial sections i believe this will be the last tutorial section uh, another thing worth noting is sometimes you'll use this machine here you'll put your cards in and the portal won't come up immediately and my biggest piece of advice is be patient it will eventually pop up you're just going to see the glowing outline of it and basically that that's because for the bigger realms, the game has to actually make those realms. It's fabricating it, right? These are procedurally generated. And so the game has to make it, spin it up, and then the server has to load it. And then you can walk through the portal. So sometimes you'll use the machine and then you'll look at the portal and it, you'll walk through it and nothing will happen. That's because you got to wait for it to look like this. You, you know, the middle will turn into this gray portal like thing. We'll talk about more about that later when we do it again. All right. Now we're in everybody's favorite biome, the swamp biome. Actually, this one's not too bad compared to a lot of game swamp biomes. It says return to Puck. So he's going to pop up here any second. There he is. And he's going to give us our next task. Acquire bones and acquire hide. Well, that means kill something, right? We need to go kill something in order to get bones. And in order to get hide, we're going to have to kill animals. It says in this case, tier one predators. So we're just going to basically find low level predators, which is probably all that exists in this realm. As far as predators, I don't think there's going to be a tier two one ends in here. And this guy now this game does have headshots. So if you hit him in the head, you'll see a yellow number and that's telling you that you're doing extra damage. So headshots are real. They do work. Now, after you kill something, you're going to pull out your skinny knife and this is how you get the materials from the animals that you kill. So there we go. We got our tier one bone and our tier one hide there we're gonna have to find a couple more it looks like see if we can get a headshot there you'll also hear a very satisfying tink uh, you can block by right clicking just know that if you're out of stamina blocking is not nearly as effective oh there was a headshot we saw the yellow number the range with the pickaxe is way shorter than it looks like it's gonna be so it's real easy to miss with it and at this low stage in the game we don't have a lot of stamina when you're holding your block your stamina is not regenerating so you don't want to overhold that okay and this should be the materials that we need uh, it's worth noting after you kill a bunch of things or after you harvest a bunch of resources you can just kind of step back and you can see if you've got it all so if we grab most of this right and we step back you can see the glowing beam and that just lets you know there's loot there now it's telling me to craft a makeshift capelet sure we're gonna go ahead and do that so this is our crude stuff again we're gonna craft this and it's in our inventory. So here we can right click it and we can click equip. And now we have gear score 10 on this item as opposed to six that so we're moving up in the world. Gear score is going to be important in this game because it's going to determine what you will and will not have access to. There's going to be dungeons. This game's dungeon equivalent has gear score level requirements. So it'll say you need to be gear score 20 in order to enter this or 50, right? And so your gear score is something that's going to be really important for you to keep up with. Now my health is deteriorating right now because my character is hungry. So I'm going to just throw down a quick campfire and we're going to cook ourselves a little meal. We're going to make some roasted meat, auto fill, ignite and uh, let's go ahead and just craft all of them really quick here and here on the left you can see it cooking so each time this bar fills one of them has been made and there it goes again it's filling up again on the right here it tells you 10 seconds to cook the item and there's things that you can do to reduce that time basically when you build your base and we'll get way more into base building in a moment here but when you build your base there's strategy that you can employ to augment other crafting stations like if they're close to something in particular then that crafting station works better so now we've crafted their food we're gonna go ahead and eat that so that our character stops dying as you can see there while we were starving our health stopped regenerating i'll go ahead and put that food in our belly and this time i'm not going to forget to take my materials back grab that and we'll get more food off of this guy because i just cooked all my meat so there's a couple things you can do with the predator meat you can cook it 
so you can eat it and you can also turn it into crafting material later. Next thing it wants me to do is acquire a healing salve and acquire roasted meat. Uh, it wants me to make more. Okay, so we'll make one more roasted meat because that's what it wants. And then it wants three healing salves. So do that. Craft. Now it says repair an item, which is what we kind of briefly touched on earlier. So you can see the durability of the item below it. So this gray bar, you can see how it's not quite filled in at the end there. This is completely full. This one's been used a bit, my skinny knife. So what we do is we right click and repair. Easy. Also down here, you can just choose to repair all if you want, although you are going to want to prioritize certain items sometimes. So the repair all option will be something that you, once you have way more essence than you need, you can consider using this, but it's almost never worth using this early on. Puck's here to tell us what to do next. And he's saying, where do you want to go? Now, now this is the end of the tutorial. He's saying, where do you want to go? What biome did you like? Where do you want to spend more time? I'm a sucker for the forest biome. So let's go ahead and do that. He gave us a card so that we can go to a forest biome. Now let's talk about the map because you're going to be using this early and often. Here is the map. These red lines, those are just roads that are in the game. The blue is the water and then everything else is the land. And then if there was water around the perimeter, well, I'll show you more of a detailed map later. But the important thing to know here is the portal is on the map. So what you can do is you can right click and you can put your own marker. This top row of beacons. The important thing about these is you can see these even when you're not in your map. Right. So if I put that there, there it is. See that? That's the beacon. So now I can just I can do stuff and I can keep making my way towards that beacon there. The other good thing about beacons is not only can you see it, but everybody else in your game can see it as well. Whereas the other markers, if we use the other type of marker, the lower one, right? I put that on the map. It shows up on the map, but if I look in that direction, it's not on my screen, but it is showing up on the compass on top, right? So one of the main distinctions between beacons and map stamps. So we're going to run towards this beacon over here. This is where the portal is. And like I said, it's never a bad idea to just grab things as you run. Remember, be careful about running in water. You want to try to avoid the water as best you can because you do get wet. And if you get wet status, then your stamina regen gets annihilated. Now we're going to put the cards in. Now we have a forest card and this time for the major card, it's an abeyance card. Play this card to seek a realm of minimal danger suitable for the construction of an estate. Okay, so we're going to do that. Now this guy will our portal forms, which is fine because it takes a second for it to form anyway. And, uh, you know, he's going to give us dinner too. So that's great. All right. Sometimes while the portal is forming, the game gives you something to do by spawning mobs for you to kill. But kill these guys. Again, headshots are always good. Release this hope echo. A little bit of lore. There we go. And see, the portal has not quite formed. So you'll walk through it and nothing will happen. Just got to give it a little bit more time. And while it's forming, the game is giving us another wave of mobs to fend off. I think this is, uh, you know, their way of giving you something to do while that happens. So it's a chance for you to get a little more essence, a little more materials, maybe get a piece of lore. Oh, there it is. It's up. And that is the end of the tutorial. So this is the point at which you would be able to play with your friends. They would be able to join your realm if they've done all of that and you've done all of that. Now we have spawned in this nice forest biome here. We've chosen the forest biome and it's going to have us. Well, let's say it's first it's going to have us talk to Puck. So let's see if we can get Puck to appear. My piece of advice here is to run generally towards the middle of the map. So I'm going to put a beacon there so that I know where that is. OK, we're going to start heading that way and I'll explain why in a moment here. This realm is going to be your home realm. You're going to be given access to alternate realms. And in those alternate realms, you can build bases if you want to. But I'm going to give you a word of caution. I don't think you really should invest much in those other realms because this is the one you always return back to. So you'll go from this realm and you'll go to another realm and let's call it a sub realm, right, where you go and you explore the sub realm and it's going to give you access to more crafting recipes, more enemy types and more ingredients, right? But the problem is it's not your home realm. So eventually you're going to be done with that place and you're going to come back to this one and you'll more or less abandon everything that you've crafted in that realm. Our first friend in this realm. Uh, give me return to Puck. Is that Puck over there? Damn it. Did I run from Puck? Puck! This dude can teleport wherever he wants and he's making me run to him. I tell you the nerve, man. All right. So basically Puck tells us, hey, this is your home. This is, you know, you can you can lay down some roots here. You can take the time to build yourself a proper house, a proper base of operations, because this is going to be your hub going forward. So when you see landmarks like this, you'll see weird 
weird structures all over the place. Don't be afraid to kind of browse them and look. Here's something we can collect. Here's an ingot. You're going to need tons of those. So if you ever see an ingot, grab it. But whenever you see an odd structure, it's worth walking by it and seeing what items you can pick up. There's loot there. Like here's a little statue. So there's probably something right up oh, there. It is a little offering to the statue. We just got a roasted meat. Hey, so there's a meal. We don't have to cook ourselves. So the game is littered with little mini destinations, little points of interest like that, that you can run by. Here's some wolves, by the way, wolves are always going to appear in packs of three. So if you see one wolf, there's two more nearby. Again, try to go for those headshots. When you see those little orbs like that one that had just appeared there, that's a little orbs of essence. So if you find essence on the ground, that's what it looks like, as opposed to deconstructing items in your inventory. Um, you'll see a little orb and you just pick that up and that's some essence. Essence can appear out of just about anything. So if you gather a plant, sometimes an essence will appear. If you kill an enemy, sometimes an essence will appear. And sometimes you'll find yourself encumbered like I am right now. This is a good time to head into your inventory and ask yourself, what do I need? here. What can I get rid of to free up some weight? You can sort your inventory by all kinds of things up in the top left here, including by weight. So if we wait until there's the weight symbol right here, see this little weight with the 13 inside of it, that means you're sorting by weight. So you can easily see, okay, what is weighing me down really bad here? In this case, we know we can get rid of our old outfit. That's never going to be good for anything. Well, until we get a companion and then we'll hand our hand-me-downs to our companions so that every time we get an upgrade, they get an upgrade. We can consume some meat. That'll free up a little weight. But it looks like it's a lot to do with these rocks here. So let's extract half the rock. There we go. And again, now whenever you're running somewhere, like right now we're running towards the middle of the map, which I'll explain why in a minute. But whenever you're running somewhere, grab fiber, right? You will never have too much fiber. Well, you might, but then you can turn it into essence. But you're going to need a lot of fiber in this game for a long time. OK, so this is a nice spot right here in more or less the middle of the map. This is a good place to be our hub of operations. Apparently these wolves thought it was a good place for them as well. OK, OK, so the first thing you're going to want to build is your estate. estate Cairn here, right? So we click this, we place this, and this is why we came to the middle of the map, right? There we go. This is our respite. This is our home. And anytime we want, we can teleport back to this. That's why it's nice for it to have a nice central location. So anytime we're going to wander out to the fringes, we'll go over here, we'll head up here, right? And then we can open the map and we can click travel to respite this button right here, and it'll bring us back to our base. So it's our one means of fast travel in this game. So we'll wander out and then click travel to respite and it'll bring us back and we can drop off all our goods and then we can wander out and again right rinse and repeat you can interact with this you can name it all right lucky veil i'm so clever now the next thing we can do is build our estate so what you want to do is you want to build yourself a foundation and then you want to build walls and a roof and the reason for this is because your crafting stations are going to perform better if they're inside of a structure as opposed to on the dirt right you want them to be on a foundation they just perform better that way so we talked to puck and he's saying hey there's a site of power you have to head there right here antiquarian site of power and your gear score requirement for that place is 20 so we have to get this gear over here on the right side up to a gear score of 20 so each piece of gear here is should be about 20 or so and that's going to get this number here at the top our equipment rating up to 20 it'll say 20 now it is worth noting that this has a bit of a lag to it so you'll put on your new gear let's say you go and you craft a bunch of 20 gear score gear and it'll show gear score 11 I've noticed that during the early access or at least the version of the game I'm playing on, it takes sometimes a minute or two for this gear score to update. And then once it does, the game will register. Oh, your gear score is 20. You finished that. Now you can go into this side of power, right? But sometimes it takes a minute to update. So if you put on new gear and this gear score doesn't change, that's why. Don't panic. Just give it a minute. All right. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and build our first base. One of the things that's worth noting is when you use your sickle to grab plants and sticks like this right here, it gives you more. So I use that. I got two sticks instead of one stick. You can see down on the bottom left. So literally you're getting double the resources by using the sickle rather than just grabbing. So here's some fiber. We'll use that. And we got two plant fiber, two sticks, two plant fiber, right? So use your sickle after you get it to gather resources rather than grabbing them by hand. You get much more that way. Now, an important thing to know about trees is when they tip over, they can hurt you. I've never had one kill me, but it has hurt me a bit and it has also hurt my companion. What it will do, though, is annihilate your buildings. If a tree tips over into a building, it just destroys it instantly. One shot. So you don't want to put your buildings near trees. So make sure not to build too close to a tree such 
such that if it tipped over, it would hit your building kind of close. So the first thing we're going to do is clear the trees near our building. Now, once we clear these, they will not come back. So as you're playing through the game, you're going to exhaust the resources right next to your base. So you can see I've planned out my general base foundation. Now I can just interact with it and it'll start to build it. So I just got to come back every time I gather some more resources and interact with it. Now I'm lucky that I hadn't built that yet because it would have just destroyed what I built because it fell over right on it, which is why we don't build right next to these things there. Now we've got the walls laid out so we can get those put up and it said we needed 27 of this lumber. Now we're coming back with about half of it. There we go. Okay. So now we need 13 more. The bottom left there, we can see how many we have. We're at eight. Need five more and the walls are done. All right. Right now it is hailing on us. So it's become quite prudent that we get a roof over our heads. So we'll go crude flat roof. So when you die, you're going to respawn. You will respawn at your cairn. And there's our cairn right there, which is right next to our base. And it's going to leave a chest where your corpse was. And this is where all of your items are going to go, right? So everything that you're not wearing will be in the chest. Now I'm finding myself to be over encumbered quite often. So one of the first things that we're going to do now that we have a roof over our heads is create some storage. Well, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to put a little bit of storage here, there, right there. Okay. So now we can put some stuff in here that we don't need immediate access to. We can also build some structures that we know we're going to need. We know that we're going to need one of everything. Essentially, every structure that we can have, we are going to need it at some point. So remember, building these things is what unlocks other things. So we're going to build them all here. Yep. And I like to just get them all down and that way I don't forget something. So now we can talk a little bit about bench location. So by putting these benches on the foundation and let's see if we inspect the bench, you can see it's sheltered. Refinement time is decreased by 10 seconds. Minimum refinement time is now one second. Increased growth rate by 25% up to a maximum of 75%. So by having it sheltered, it's getting some buffs, right? And also now with the fire going, look, as we don't have a line here, it has well lit refinement time is decreased by 10 seconds. Minimum refinement time is one second. So you can keep doing things in your base, putting things next to each other that have augmentations. So the campfire, if we click on it right there, and then over here on the right augmentation slots, these are the number of things that can augment it and then valid augmentations, things that it can do and then trade that are emitted. So we've got warmth and well lit. So that well lit is being given to this whenever the fire's going. Now you'll be able to get lights and other things that are more uh, more permanent sources of the well lit bonus. But it's just an example of how these things in your base are worth kind of grouping together so that they are buffing each other. What do we need? We need, that's oh, always the wood. We just had to repair our axe there because it was broken. No problem. In the bottom, it says minus five essence dust. So it costs five of the essence dust to repair it. We can get tons of essence dust. The easiest way by far to get essence dust is actually from fiber because it's got like the best ratio of essence dust to, you know, whatever. So if you just grab a ton of fiber with your scythe or your sickle, you'll be able to convert that into essence dust like really, really fast because you, it's like a one to one ratio. So for each fiber you pick up, you'll get an essence dust. All right. Now we've got a couple of things that are worth looking at here. You see this right here. It says we're tired. Our eyelids droop. You won't be able to push much longer longer without rest. So our character will actually start dying if we don't get some rest. So let's go ahead and put a bedroll inside of our base. This is another thing that does benefit. You can see the line. So when you're placing an item, you can see if it interacts with another object in the base. So if we go too far away, the line's gone, right? So it's now too far to get that bonus that it would get if we put it over here. We'll go ahead and we're just going to set this bedroll right here for now. And looks like our character needs to eat and he needs to rest. So let's go ahead. If I I hold E down. You can see I can choose short rest. I can inspect. I can long rest. Well, you can only long rest at night, so we can't do that. But if we just press E on it, boom, now that meter fills up in the bottom. Now it's full. It's blue. And now we can eat. Fix that problem there. And because we ate, our max stamina went up because if we hover over this, this is max health, max stamina both went up by eating this particular food, the roasted meat. So remember, each type of meat comes with its own buff. Some are better than others. When you get buffs that are going to increase your stamina regen, those feel amazing especially when you're out gathering resources. All right, so now the game is telling us to do a very important task, and that is head to the 
Essence Trader and purchase your Sewing Bench schematic. So here's the Essence Trader. You'll oftentimes find an Essence Trader in realms that you visit. So they're always really important to take note of, and you're always going to want to go visit them and then buy the recipes and the schematics that they are selling for you. This is going to be one of the primary ways that you unlock the next tier of crafting equipment so that you can craft better gear, better weapons, and so on. You'll see a marker like this where it's yellow, and that's generally an NPC that you can go and you can talk to and you can do a quest for. In this particular case, this is how you're going to get your first companion. And then this here, Realmic Transmitter. So you'll eventually be able to build one of these in your base so you don't have to run here to activate it. But until then, you can run to this one on this map. You can put in a card that will augment this entire realm, buffing you or debuffing you, depending on what card you put in there. Some cards are going to make it so that you can jump way higher, which is going to make traversing the place a lot easier. But there's usually a give and a take, a kiss and a curse that come with each of those cards. So for instance, the one that lets you jump really high and really far also reduces your damage. Just something to be aware of when using that thing. It's usually not all good, but it's also not all bad. So now we're going to make our way to the essence trader here. And for that quest, I'm going to put a marker on the map so that I can easily make my way there. Where's that marker? Oh, there it is right there. So we're just going to head that way so that we can make our simple sewing bench. Simple sewing benches is what's going to allow us to craft our first tier of armor. And on our way there, we're going to be grabbing fiber and extracting it to create essence. So we had 72 fiber. Now we have 72 additional essence. And again, you can see down here at the bottom how much essence you have. You can't have too much. You will go through it from repairing, from buying schematics, you know, so never feel bad about getting over encumbered and then salvaging to make room. You can see our roasted meat time now is one second because it has the maximum benefit on this craft station. Earlier, it was 10 seconds to craft. Now it's one second to craft because of these like bonuses from nearby objects and being sheltered and stuff like that. So like I said, this first trader that you interact with, especially the one for your companion, it's going to require a couple of things from you. You'll need to collect and extract a lot of essence on your way there. It's also going to require you to build a few basic items when you get there. So you're going to want some fiber, some sticks and some stone. Make sure you grab a few of those things on your way to them. Here's the quest I was telling you about basically saying, hey, you know, if you want a companion, then you should probably help them out. We're like, yeah, that sounds good. Seems reasonable. And what does the companion want help with? A lot of times it's going to depend on the place, but a lot of times it's going to be if you see items like this where it's outlined in blue when you get there, that means that's generally part of the quest is to finish building that for the person. So we're going to build those. There's the companion that we're helping. They're going to be ours here in a moment. If you see something like this, it opens up when you finish the quest and then you can grab it. And in this case, the reward, if we hover over it, it says 24 essence. So we grab that. That's 24 extra essence, which is going to be great because this essence trader is going to, well, we're going to need a bunch of it. Well, before we forget, let's go talk to this guy here. And he says for hire. So recruit him. Now we have our first companion. Now let's quickly talk about companions and how they work. So these are the items in his inventory. He can hold things for you. So we can go ahead and be like, oh man, I'm over encumbered and they can hold unlimited weight. Uh, at least as far as I've been able to tell, I've put massive, massive stacks of lumber on my companion and they carry it. No problem. Right. So they're a great way to offload some weight, no matter where you are, when you are, whatever. You've got these items. If there's a blue dot on the item, that means they have it equipped. So if we say, Unequip. Now the blue dot's gone. It's a level six item. So we're going to want to give him at least a decent weapon as soon as we're able to, right? Because uh, gear score six items are not very great, but you know, we ourselves are wearing gear score six right now. So, you know, we've fallen on hard times here. So that's why we're going to talk to this guy. Simple items. We're going to be able to craft a simple maul, a simple hammer. The hammer is what you're going to use to repair your benches and your walls of your base if they get hurt. So that's nice to have. Although you're not going to need that anytime soon unless you do what I did and you have a tree fall into your base and damage or destroy part of it. We're going to get the maul, a simple fishing rod. This is going to let you go fishing. You don't need bait. You just toss it in once you got the rod. I'll go over how to use that later. A simple umbrella. This is going to protect you from hail. This would have been useful to have earlier when the hail beat me to death. Then we've got realm cards. We're going to want to be able to craft all of these because occasionally the game is going to say, OK, now go to this type of realm and it's going to give you a very specific realm it wants you to go to. And if you've collected all the cards, you'll be able to craft that card and head to that realm. But before we grab all the realm cards, we're going to look and see if there's things that are going to be more immediate needs of ours. And there definitely are. OK, so we want the simple sewing bench, right? This is going to require 55. That's the one our quest is sending us here for. So we're going to extract some stuff until we have 55. There it is. And you'll notice there's these. See this next level of currency? That's the green one I was talking about earlier. So you've got the green, 
then the blue, then the purple. And as you advance, you'll get the higher and higher tiers. Essentially, the way it's going to work is in this zone, you're going to get a lot of the gray. And then in the next zone that you go to, you'll get a bunch of the green and just a tiny bit of the blue. And then in the next zone, you'll get a bunch of the blue, right? And so as you travel to other realms, you'll be able to get the next tier of the resource. So if you find that you need the next tier, well, then you need to wrap it up in the zone that you're in and make your way into the next realm. And most likely that's where you're going to find that next tier of resource that you are looking for. We also need a simple saw table and a simple smelter. So what I'm going to recommend when you come here, buy everything that it sells, right? So if you can't afford it yet, like I can't, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to go walk around and grab fiber until we can buy everything that he has to offer it. You will not regret it. You're going to need all those tables and it's better than having to make a trek out to this guy again later. Okay, so let's quickly go over the items at the essence trader before I finish buying him out here. You've got your simple items. We've already got all of those. It says own, so we know how to make all of these things. We've got the realm cards, which we briefly talked about before. You're going to want all of those. You've got your lighting. These are nice to have because they can improve the craft times in your base, right? Remember lighting and augment other structures. Then you've got your building designs, better roofing. This is fine. As far as I could tell, this is purely cosmetic. Crafting refinement. This is what we want to buy all of next. We want this simple saw table. Buy it. Simple smelter. Definitely. We need that metal and that metal refinement. We use simple mortar station. Yes. Simple mortar station. Yep. Uh, and then there we go. We have everything. And the very final tab here is resource. And you can buy wood bundles. You can buy plant fibers here. I have never found a need to do this yet. I could see it later on when I'm looking for something that's really rare. I can switch by the essence trader and grab it but right now he's selling the things i can buy are all things that are very easy to come by out in the wild so i wouldn't want to really spend my essence 10 essence for one bundle of wood is not a very effective trade for me another thing to know about the companion is whatever weapon you give him is the thing he's going to do so if we give him an axe he's going to chop down trees when he's near them right now he started out with a mining pick so every time he's near something he can mine he'll use his pick on it and mine it the one downside is right now the ai sometimes he'll mine something but then he won't pick it up He'll just leave it there on the ground. So just be careful when you hear him mining or when you hear him using his axe and he chops down a tree, turn back and maybe grab the stuff that he's dropped onto the floor from that tree because there's a good chance he won't pick it up on his own. Now we're done here. And like we said, we put our base in the middle so we can just travel back to our base. Confirm. Boom. Fast travel. And we're going to use the bed, make it daytime, because why not? Although a really good strategy is to queue up a bunch of things to craft right before you go to bed, because when you wake up, it'll be done. You won't have to wait for the timer. Now we can craft all those fancy new stations. Remember, you can use notes, this button here, and you can see if you've crafted it yet. So we can look and it says, I have built this. I have not built this. So this one we don't have yet. So we're going to place it, you know, make sure it connects to the fire. It likes that. We also got refinement station. So we're going to make all of those as well. So what do we need? Fiber and wood bundles, fiber, lumber, animal fiber, blocks and stone blocks. Okay. But we need a little bit of everything, especially fiber. And this constant need for resources is why you don't want to build your base someplace where there's no resources right next to it. It's better to build it in an area like this, where it's surrounded by tons of different types of resources, because you're going to need a lot of rocks, you're going to need a lot of trees, you're going to need a lot of everything. In order to get blocks, you're going to take your pickaxe to these kind of rocks. See how it shows you a green pickaxe when you look at it? That's the game's way of telling you, hey, use this item on it. See, we look at this, it shows us the sickle axe right? And it tells you that it requires a gear score level zero X. If you hover over it and it requires a gear score 20 X, there'll be a 20 in the X, which is going to happen to you with certain types of minerals that you can mine, you know, and certain types of resources that you can gather. You'll need the higher tier tools. Okay, so I'm getting encumbered. So I'm going to tell this guy to hold my rocks for me and my sticks because those are kind of heavy. Actually, you can also hold these ones. There we go. Now I should be good for a long time. One of the things that you will need so much of in this game, and I almost won't be surprised if they rebalance it a little bit, is wood. I mean, you will need a lot of wood. So never worry, never, never say, oh man, am I chopping down too many trees? Do I have too much lumber? Because the answer is 100% no. You're going to need tons of wood bundles, and then you're going to need to refine that into tons of lumber, and then you're going to need to refine that in tons of carved wood. And each time you do this, it requires multiple versions of the resource below it. So you will never have too much wood. I'll just tell you that right now. If you go out and you chop down half the forest, you know, you'll be doing future you a big favor. At the same time, you know, 
you'll have a better axe so that it goes faster later. So don't stockpile too much too early. Let yourself get a decent axe before you go to ham collecting all the wood and chopping down the forest, you know? There is a scaling efficiency there. All right, this says we need animal fiber. To make animal fiber, all we do is come here to the tanning station and put on some meat there and we craft it. Fortunately, that goes pretty fast. All right, and then we're gonna use the saw table to make lumber and we've got quite a bit here we can use to make lumber. It's at 20 seconds per lumber. So anything we could do to improve that would be great. For now, we're just gonna let that go. While it's crafting, you can see it's progress there on all seven pieces, so. When that's completely filled in, all seven pieces will be done. You can come by and pick them up one at a time as it finishes them if you'd like. So right now I need three pieces of lumber. So when that says three, I can grab them, slap them into that thing and we can move on. Simple. All right. So now the next thing we want to do is craft all of these simple things. These simple things are better than the crude ones that we have right now, right? So we would want to make a simple everything really but bundles straps 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 so we're gonna need a lot of straps okay so that's all done we've crafted every structure in our base that we can so far so this is a great start so we have been cutting down a lot of wood and we'll probably need to cut down a lot more so let's first get a better wood axe craft we're gonna need to cut down a ton more so i'm gonna give my partner in crime my companion i'm gonna give him a wood axe too and get him out of that awful thing that he's wearing so so that he can not only do more damage to help me in combat, but he can also chop trees when I need. So the first upgrade is a massive one. So we went from six to 20. Now this old wood ax that we have, we have no need for this anymore. We're gonna go ahead and extract it. And the duplicate we're gonna give to Harley here. There you go, buddy. We'll put it in his inventory, then we'll right click and tell him to equip it. Now he's equipping that. We'll take the old crappy pickaxe that he was using and we'll go ahead and extract that for the essence. There we go. He's happy, I'm happy, and many trees are gonna pay the price for this. We definitely want an umbrella. An umbrella is great for one, protecting us from the hail that will inevitably come with literally every time it rains, it starts hailing afterwards. And let's put that on right here okay so now we've got our umbrella so if you are falling to your death you can pull out your umbrella and then use it to slow fall and the simple umbrella does not have a very far glide distance and it also has a really high stamina consumption rate let's see we're falling slow but our stamina is being depleted and we don't go very far the higher level umbrellas you'll be able to go much farther so you glide more than you fall whereas this low level one you fall much more than you glide if that makes sense. So don't worry, the first one is the worst one. It's only gonna get better from there. If you're a little disappointed with it when you go to do your first glide, we're gonna definitely want simple climbing picks. This is gonna allow us to climb things that we wouldn't otherwise be able to, which is great. So if you, you'll come up to a wall with these things. Let's see, I'll give you an example of how we use them here. So you come up to something like this, right? It's too high, but you can pull these out and then you'll climb up them. Now, stamina consumption of these things at this level is really, really high. And if you don't have any cards augmenting your stamina regen and stamina consumption in this area, these things are almost useless. As you can see, I'm trying to climb up, but before I even, oh, I did make it that time, okay? But I was out. That is as high as we can climb with these simple picks right now. Later though, you'll be able to climb much more effectively when you have more stamina and some stamina regen, you'll be able to climb some really tall objects, no problem. These climbing picks are gonna be required because there's gonna be puzzles where you literally can't can't complete it without being able to climb. It's gonna say, find the hidden object. And then in order to do that, you have to climb sometimes. Let's give our guy all this heavy crap here. Teamwork makes the dream work. Harley, good job, buddy. That animation is just too long sometimes. Another ask for the developers, make that faster, make that faster. Quickly grab a ton of fiber because now we're gonna craft all of our 20 gear score armor, which is gonna need a, like quite a bit of fiber here. Okay, let's start crafting our armor. And it looks like we really need to craft our bag. Well, basically our whole body. So we're going to do that simple shirt craft. And we can equip that 20 equip. Be careful when you're equipping things not to hit extract They're right next to each other. And there's no are you sure pop up when you're extracting a piece of armor. Simple gloves. Okay. Now you can see our gear scores up to 15 with that change. 
So this wraps up all of the basics for the first, you know, half hour, hour of the game. Everything that you're going to have to do, why you're doing it this way, what it means, and anything like that. If you have any questions so far, be sure to ask down in the comments below. I'll respond to every single question. That's just something I do. Or just say hi to help out with the algorithm if you find yourself enjoying the video so far. Now I'm going to switch over to my other character, which is much farther along in the game, and talk about all of the stuff at his disposal so that we can kind of dive into more of the deeper into the game's mechanics. All right, now we're on my other character who is quite a bit higher level. He's got a gear score of 67 right now. Look at his fabulous outfit. Uh, I wonder if like later on it's going to start looking a little, you know, I don't know, a little more dapper. But right now we are looking good. So there's what we look like now on this character. Here's our nice abode. You know, we've got stone walls and stone foundation in this game. I did notice one thing that they probably need to fix. So for instance, my hammer, I can use this hammer to repair walls, to repair, you know, stations. But right now when the floor is damaged, I can't hit the floor. So I think this is a bug in the early access this is probably something that they're going to have to fix but until then just be very careful not to destroy the floor that your items are on because i think if something came in here and the floor got damaged and broke or if i accidentally hit it with my pickaxe i'm pretty sure everything on this foundation would just implode you know and i'd lose that and most of those resources so just be kind of careful of your floors take good care of them until they make it so that you can repair those with your hammer this character is my first character and i did make the mistake i kind of warned you guys about in the very beginning which was to make sure you build your base dead center which i didn't on this character i'm over here on the edge so every time i wanted to go somewhere i had to run all the way across the map to get to it and then i could port back um so remember to build your base in the middle and then another mistake i made on this character is i went through the waypoint over there this is one oh, i'll tell you about this structure in a minute it's really cool but there's a the portal point over there and i went through it and i thought that was like the new main zone but it wasn't it was just like a sub zone that i was going to be visiting not staying in and i built a ton of my good crafting benches in there so what i had to do was i came back here and then i had to build them all over again fortunately you can destroy something and get most of the resources back that you put into building it so it wasn't a total loss uh, but i did have to rebuild some of that when i realized that no this is home this place is home. This is the one I want to build in. So just be careful of that. Speaking of which, let's go talk about something really important here. And that's going to be the dungeons that have gear scores tied to them. So they are the sites of power, right? Um, these sites of power, when you see the symbol, that's a dungeon that has some kind of a gear score requirement for you to enter it. The lowest ones are going to have a gear score requirement of 20 and the higher ones, well, it goes up and up and up the farther you get into the game. The highest one I think I've done so far was 55, something like that. And it's going to look like this. You'll stumble into a, you'll see like a door that looks like this. It's very much protected and limiting who may or may not enter. And if your gear score isn't high enough, you'll walk up to it and you'll bounce off. And that's the game's way of saying, hey, your gear score is not high enough. If you go in here, you'll probably get your butt beat anyway. Way. Even when you have the correct gear score, it can be tough in there. Don't underestimate inside there. And if you go in and it's tough, don't feel bad. Okay. There's some really tough fights. So if we go in now though, I do have the gear score and you can see, look at that. It's a big, deep cave system. Like you can go way, way down. It's pretty large. And then you'll have to fight enemies all the way down. And at the very end, there's going to be a boss. A lot of times it's going to be a mechanical boss and uh, he'll put up a pretty decent fight, man. He'll make you work for it. And when you beat him, you'll unlock the, you know, some important thing that you need to progress through the game. I'll go down to the bottom of this one just to give you an example. Okay, there we go. So now we're at the bottom. So you'll get to a room that looks like this. This is the boss room. When you see this, this is the boss. You'll interact with this here, this mechanism. It'll spawn a boss, a mechanical boss of some sort, most likely, and you'll have to do battle with him and kill him. One of the things I highly recommend you utilizing when you're fighting these bosses, because they can be quite difficult, it is quite easy to die. There's a few things to know. When you get knocked down, you don't die, and your ally, your companion, can res you so long as they're alive. So when you're fighting the boss, keep them alive. Keep them alive. That's going to be important. And then they'll res you every time you go down and you can res them every time they go down and you can keep each other up pretty well like that. Now, eventually you're both going to die at the same time. And if that happens and you don't have a respawn point set up in here, you're going to have to start the fight all over again. 
Now, I don't know how long they're going to let you do this. Here's a little echo. We'll grab that. But one of the things you can do is build a spawn point so that when you die, you spawn back in the dungeon. You don't leave the dungeon and have to start the fight all over again. And you can use these fairy rings, this thing right here. And you'll place this. It looks like this. You can place this like that. And then this will be your respawn point. So if this is the boss arena, you wouldn't want to put it quite this close because it can and will get destroyed by the boss very, very easily if it's this close. So in this dungeon, what I ended up doing Doing was I put mine right above like up there and so I would respawn up there and then I jumped down with my umbrella and rejoin the fight before their health reset now that was something that felt a little bit cheesy I wouldn't be surprised if the developers fixed it so that you couldn't do that but it was a tough fight and I I don't think I would have beat it without doing that certainly not with the gear and the weapons that I had access to at the time so just know that that's an option for you take advantage of that fairy ring once you get it it's gonna be really really really, really useful for these boss fights. But the important thing is you have to put it inside the dungeon or else their health will reset every time you die. So that's how these sides of power work. Let's travel back to our base. Now, since this character has unlocked much more on the map, let's take a look at it because there's a lot of important information being given to us here. So you've got all these symbols. This one, it says occupation completed. Defeat hostile creatures occupying the site. So when you see one that says occupation, that means you just go there, you kill all the enemies that are there and you complete it and you can pick up your reward. So that's what that symbol right there is for the occupations. These are your sites of power. You go there, you conquer the site, you receive the means to open hunt realms, right? It's telling you what the reward is because a lot of times your quest log on the right side, it's going to say you need X and Y, or you need to go to this type of realm, or you need to go to this place. You'll know exactly what you're looking to do next. It's on the right right now. It says unlock the gloom card. So I would open up my map and I'd go, okay, where's the gloom side of power? Oh, there it is. Gloom side of power, right? So I'd go there, I'd complete that and I'd finish that quest. Then you've got this one, this puzzle piece, and this is Bastille of Intellect. Fate artifacts emit musical tones, copy their sequence to unlock the rewards. So you'll go there and you'll watch the sequence light up. It'll go boom, 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 boom. And I've seen as high as seven of them scattered throughout the location. So you got to first find them all. Then you've got to watch them go off in order. You have to memorize that order and then you have to push them all in that same order. And when you push them all in the same order that they were going off before you got there, you complete it and you get your reward. Now, if you do it in the wrong order, like if you press the third one fourth, then a wave of mobs is going to spawn and you're going to have to kill them and then you have to start over. So you don't want to just sit there and haphazardly guess because it's going to waste a lot of time and energy. You're going to want to watch it, take a few seconds to watch the order, you know, jot it down if you have to. Like the one that I did that was seven locations scattered over this castle. It was rather large. It took a minute to do. I just took screenshots of each location and pasted them into a document in order so that I could just go from one to the next, man, because they were far apart and all over the place. Then you've got the Realmic Transmuter. That's what this thing is. Consume minor realm cards to trigger realm wide effects. This is going to be in the zone somewhere and you can go use that to apply these effects or you can build one in your base. So that's that's what this is right here, minor realm cards. So I can put minor realm cards in this device here. I've unlocked. You won't have this until pretty far into the game. Same thing with this. I can use this to open up portals to other realms, right? This is a portable version of one that I can put in my base. And the nice thing is when you use one of these, you can reopen the portal. So if you want to leave a portal open, you can build one of these and then not close the portal. See, this says close portal so I could open it for a new destination. Instead, I could just build like another device right next to it and leave that portal to the last location. You know, I could very easily revisit my old destinations if I wanted to. Here we can put cards in. Now, if we click on one of these, it tells you what it's going to do. Play this card to craft durable tools that enhance your blocking ability, but use stamina less efficiently. And now the nature of all of these cards you're getting early on tends to be such that you look at the kiss and you're like, oh, that sounds pretty good. And then you read the curse and it's not that great at all. And you're like, well, that's not worth it. Right. And so you're going to see a lot of these that you're going to want to pass on, but there will be some that are situationally pretty good. Now let's use my device to reopen the portal to the last place I went. We're going to open this. Now you're going to notice, like I mentioned earlier, it's there and you're going to go through it. Nothing's going to happen. Don't panic. That's because the game is literally loading that massive zone that you know, you made and you've altered, you might have a base there. You might have a lot of trees chopped down. It's loading all of that information and pulling it onto the server so that you can load into it. 
So it's going to take a while. It's not broken. It just takes a moment. So whenever you see this glowing pattern around what looks to be a portal that you're trying to go through or that you want to go through, you just have to wait. It'll take a minute, but eventually it'll finish loading that zone and you can walk through. And there it is. So when you come out of it, you'll have a couple ways to get back to where you were. You could reopen the portal here at the device that, you know, the portal that you just came through to get here or you can simply open your map and travel through respite. And this is going to take you back to your home realm, your respite, as it's called. OK, so now we're in this new zone. So on the map here, you can see these veiny looking things. That's the roads. You've got this wolf on the map, this wolf head. That's actually a creature that walks around and revives fallen animals. So if you kill something, but you don't loot its corpse, it's going to revive it when it walks by it. You see this ticket symbol here. That's an essence trader. You go there to buy the schematics and things that they have to unlock that next phase of crafting. Remember, you are going to be collecting essence. Uh, this character right here, you can see I have lots of the gray common dust and I have 35 of the rare and I have 173 of the uncommon. So I'm collecting multiple tiers of it now on this character. Then this one is Bastion of Agility. When you see this symbol, there's going to be an artifact hidden somewhere and you have to reach it. That's what I was talking about when I said you'll definitely need those climbing picks sometimes because sometimes these are located somewhere where the only way to get to it is to climb up to it with those picks. Sometimes it's a jump puzzle that you can just navigate to get to it. Sometimes you need the picks. So make sure you craft yourself a set of those picks for those. The Bastion of Insight. These are just a series of fey glyphs that are hidden nearby. So you'll walk around the pillars. This is one of the easiest ones. I love when I see this one because it's just it takes no more than 10 seconds each time you walk around the pillars. You find all of the hidden glyphs and you can see the symbol that would be there on the uh, little pop out box describing it. A series of fake glyphs hidden nearby. So, yeah, you just touch all of them. It takes 10 seconds once you know what you're looking for after the first time and you're good to go. You hit them all. There's usually three. And after you hit the third one, the device unlocks, you grab your reward. Uh, the defense one, you just walk up to this place. You start the quest by finishing building whatever they need you to finish building, then talking to the NPC there. And then a waves of enemies will come. And after you defeat the final wave, if you survive, it can be pretty tough. So when you go to this, be prepared, man. Be prepared with potions, food. Make sure your gear is repaired, right? That last wave, man, it's pretty tough. Or at least the one I ran into was. Then you've got aid. This is oftentimes just going to be you walk up to a place and and you'll see a bunch of blue outlines for structures, right? Indicating that it wants you to help them build those structures. And after you finish aiding that NPC, you'll be able to hire them as your companion to follow you around in game. Now, you can only have one companion, so you would have to dismiss your companion if you wanted to hire a new one. But before you dismiss it, make sure you grab any materials or gear off of your companion so that, you know, you don't lose it with a companion that you just dismissed. You're going to want to take all that stuff off and then put it on your new companion. Companion. Now, this is an important one, the Fey Tower. This is really cool. When you see the symbol, it's usually the first thing you want to do in that zone because it's basically this tower full of puzzles. You're going to climb your way to the top. Reminds me a little bit of Enshrouded Towers. But when you get to the top, it's going to reveal all these places. So all these places on the map, they weren't there. I couldn't see these destinations until I climbed to the top of the Fey Tower and then it put them all on my map and lit them all up. And then all of a sudden I knew where everything on this zone was pretty much. Right. And so that's why it's a good place to go first. Climb your way to the top, clear the puzzles, and it lights up all the key points of interest in that zone. Alternatively, you could just run around and find them all yourself, you know, but that's why it's nice to start with that one. Sometimes you'll see a place like this where there's lots of little occupations all next to each other. This is a good cluster of place to go to to get lots of essence. And then sometimes there will be a fey portal where you can go there and head on in and visit a new realm. And then, of course, there's this symbol right here, uh, which is an NPC that you need to go talk to. That means that there's going to be a quest for you to do there. Now let's go back to our zone. So we're just going to travel back to our respite, our home zone. And then let's quickly touch on how fishing works, because it's a little bit confusing at first. Sometimes it'll be raining and there's not a lot you can do about about that you can't sleep to pass the time so you kind of just have to deal with it which is a bit unfortunate you know you pull out our umbrella and just run through it it's probably going to start hailing right about when we're trying to fish yep and here's the hail 
And there's not much you can do other than wait it out. Once you have better gear, the hail doesn't really bother you that much. You're going to lose one health every second or so. Not too big a deal. So let's pull out that fishing rod. So this is how fishing works in the game. What you're going to do is you know, push your mouse button, wind up the cast, and then aim a little bit up into the air and throw it on out. Now it says it landed on ground, so it's not deep enough here. So let's try that again. Bobber landed on the ground. This is the worst lake ever. All right, there we go. And we're off. So now the way this works is you've got that tension in the middle there. You want to keep that about at the line. Now you're going to see as you hold your mouse wheel down, it's going to deplete your stamina. So you've got to watch out for two things. There's two ways to fail reeling in a fish. One, if the tension goes all the way to the right, the line will snap and you'll lose the fish. The other is for you to run out of stamina. If your stamina goes to zero, you instantly fail. So those are the two ways, and they're both instant. The second the line goes all the way to the right, you'll fail. The second you run out of stamina, you'll fail. But as long as you keep reeling in and you keep that tension under control, and you can modify the tension by looking at the fish. If you look away, the tension goes up, right? If we look away, if we look right at it, tension's good. So we'll just reel in while kind of, you know, trying to keep the tension in the middle, wearing it down, and boom. You can see the red bar over his head going down lower and lower as we reeled him in. We'll do one more real quick. There we go. Trout's on it. So now I'm going to try to keep the tension in the middle. Try to keep reeling down, watching my stamina. Oh yeah, he's only a level 10 there. So boom, got him real quick. Don't forget to pick him up after you catch him. And there you go. And that is how fishing works. The better your fishing rod, the easier it's going to be to catch fish. I will say the fish in the lake are much easier to catch than the fish in the ocean. At least the ocean ones I was catching were like level 40 so it was quite a lot of work to pull them in if the fish fight is taking way too long it's likely you're just in a spot where the fish are too high level for you at the moment okay now another thing that's worth talking about here so in the base i've got a lot of decorative items see this crude grindstone here got this wheelbarrow right this saddle rack now these are not something i can use to craft anything they almost look cosmetic but they're not they actually have uses so if we go in here and one of the important things you're gonna have to do when building is and this is why it's important to build basically one of everything you're gonna have to like click on an object like this rustic toolbox so if i click on this it tells me this gives you the ability to make the refined wood axe so i wouldn't have the ability to make this had i not put this box down somewhere right and so while it looks cosmetic it says adds new recipes to the following stations so very important if you have something in here that you make it because like this wheelbarrow it gave us a refined sickle so we could make that right our better tools are being unlocked by putting these simple objects in our house and they look almost like decorations but they actually unlock more things for you to craft so make sure anytime you can you craft everything and that's why this notes tab is so important because just skim over everything and look for it to say i have not built this before so if we go from the left to the right boom there crude chaparral trout trophy a crude trophy made out of common chaparral trout okay so i'm going to click that and i'm going to go back to info and see what does it give me it's going to give us uh better fishing rods okay so we'll be able to get the refined fishing rod and it looks like some new types of meals as well so this is going to be something that i would want to craft as i mentioned before lighting is actually also useful you know you can pay attention to that when you're putting something up look for those green lines that are telling you hey this item is connecting to a lot of things like if we put that there look how many things it's augmenting it's turning those items into well lit if we put that there right which is going to accelerate their crafting times one last thing about crafting here is let's say you're crafting a new piece of gear right and if we look at my gear all of these things are the same tier this 72 trapper shirt is the same as this 61 Trepper's coat, right? That's the same tier of item, but it has 11 higher gear score. The reason this one came out 11 gear score higher is because when I went to make my coat, it required thread. I used a higher quality thread and I used higher quality felt. So here we can make thread out of different ingredients. Right now I have plant fiber, I have animal fiber. In that situation, I had a bunch of hemp fiber, which worked out really well and boosted that gear score up 11 for the same tier of items. So a great way to get higher gear score is to use higher quality ingredients. So not all ingredients are the same. You'll notice that you'll find a lot of different sources of leather. Look at how many different types of leather I have, right? This leather, this leather, this leather. All right, so when you're crafting an item, what that means is you have to pay attention to the type of leather that you're using, for example. So so if we are to put the fiber here and then I have three different types of leather. And if I hover over this first one on the right there, you see item level 20 at the top. And if I hover over the next one, it says item level 20 again. And then finally, this third one says item level 25. 
So that means the baseline level for this item will be 25 before anything else, right? So I put that there and I'd be crafting a baseline 25 item with a chance for it to go actually higher than that still, right? So the ingredients that you use matter and that's why you'll have multiple different types of ingredients coming from multiple different animals or you know, plants or whatever you, whatever you grab there. And another thing, you're going to find these things, your infusions. Okay. So let's grab an infusion and a charm. Okay. And this is another way to boost your gear score by just a little. And it's also a nice way to give your character some extra powers. So it says lustrate infusion, poison resist. When applied to equipment, this infusion provides increased poison resistance, just as a cure may be drawn from a poison. So too does this essence stem from that, which it negates. It stings the skin, but soothes just as quickly. So we'll go ahead and right click, and then we can now apply this. And it tells us which gear we could apply this to. So our chest piece is eligible for this type of a infusion. So we can put that on there. The chest piece is level 61 right now. If we apply this, the chest piece is now level 63. So it added two gear score to it. Charms work very similar. This charm increases the wearer's damage whenever they remain uninjured and avoid damage for uh, five seconds. So we go apply and it tells us which pieces of gear it's eligible for. And similarly, we can pick one of these gears. I'm going to choose this code again. It's 63. We put it on. It remains at 63, but when we hover over it, see this little pop out that comes out there? Perks. Charm of Patience is there. And then if you look at the stats on this item now with the infusions and the everything that we've done, it says poison resist plus plus, cold resist plus plus, encumbrance plus, right? So this is a pretty decent piece of gear there. If you're wondering how you're eventually going to be able to get guns in this game, this is going to be it right here. This saddle, this saddle rack saddle. There's a search bar here so you can look for things, by the way. This saddle, if we look at it, it says it gives us the ability to make pistols and ammo for the pistols, right? So very important that you get the saddle rack if you're someone that's looking to get guns. Okay, let's dive a little more into the UI here. You've got crafting. This is stuff that you can craft. You can come in here and read the tool tips. It tells you what it is, crafting refinement, what, you know, crafted at benches with the following trades, spinning wheel, simple spinning wheel, waving low, right? It tells you how to make it. So if there's ever an ingredient that you need, like thread, you can search for it here and it says, okay, in order to make thread, you're going to need two fiber and you do it at the refined spinning wheel. So anytime you're looking for an ingredient and you're not sure how to make it, open your crafting menu and just search for that ingredient metal plate and refinement and there it is brazier will make it out of three ingots you're going to be crafting things constantly and it's going to ask you for stuff you've never made before easiest way to find out how to make it is right there under the crafting menu just search for it easy peasy building anytime you need to know how to make a building what it's going to require of you if you have it yet you can just search for it. brazier right oh there it is i do have it and it's going to require six ingots and three shafts okay then you've got the journal the journal is basically Basically your quest log. This is what you're trying to accomplish in the game. These are the places you're going. Diving farther, unlock the gloom card. Previously, this had a gear score. It said, get this gear score and then unlock the gloom card. We got the gear score. So now we can go into that side of power and unlock that gloom card. Next, we have earn the lawman's trust. And that's going to give us 100 of that T1 essence. Juicy. That's great. So this is where you can find all your quests that you're trying to complete. From here, you can track or untrack them. So if you want them to appear here or if you don't, you can choose to untrack it. If maybe you just got too much going on or not enough you can just put it over there i tend to track everything so that i know where i stand then here under challenges you've got challenges that you can complete and by completing these it tells you what your rewards will be for doing so so this could be a good way to get essence if you need it so for instance build structures using pieces 41 out of 50 if i get that to 50 i get 750 essence that is a ton right or i got apprentice builder build a structure of at least 10 pieces and i got 250 essence so you do have to come in here and hit claim once you've done that otherwise they'll just be sitting in here like mine have for the entire game because I didn't realize until just now that I needed to actually click the claim button to get these rewards. Good to know. Don't make the same mistake I did. Oh my gosh, there's so much in here. This would have saved me so much time, dude. Amazing. Well, hey, that's good to know. So make sure you come in here and you claim all the rewards that you do have sitting in here just by playing the game. Very, very easy to miss that. Wow. Okay. Then you've got the glossary. If you ever want to know more about a certain topic or a certain item or whatever, you can come in here and read up on it. Okay. And then there's the codex, which, you know, you can come in.
come in here and you can just read up on anything that you found in the game. There's lots of lore and bits like that. Then you've got how to play. While you're playing the game, you'll grab objects or things will pop up saying how to do something or what this means, what that means. And sometimes that pop up will disappear before you're fully able to digest it or understand it. You can come back in here and read it again. Just click on it. Right. And it tells you which ones you've clicked on. They'll be shimmering if you have not read them yet. Or if you don't want any of it to be shimmering, you feel like you got it all. Click mark as red. And now everything in that category will be marked as red and it'll stop shimmering for you if you've got that OCD. Then finally, we have shops. If you're ever wondering what a trader sells, right? You're wondering, oh man, how do I get that item? Where do I get that item? Where do I get this schematic so that I can buy this thing so I can craft that other thing? Well, you can come over here to shops and you can see what each essence trader is selling. So we can go to the desert antiquarian trader or the forest antiquarian trader, right? And we can look at their wares and we can see what it is they're selling and if we want to buy it. We cannot buy it from here. We actually have to go visit it, but we can know that they have it before we make the trip to that realm. Very, very useful if you're looking for something in particular, you know, like a simple upgrade bench or a refinement table. So the next one it wants me to travel to is a desert herbarium realm. And so I want to see what's there, right? I want to double click this, see what he's selling. Uh, refined climbing picks. Whoa, so I'll get the recipe for refined climbing picks. I'll become a much better climber, refined hammer so I can repair better, refined umbrella glider so I can glide better. Oh man, this zone's gonna be great, right? Lots of massive upgrades for my character there. We got some charms, we got potions, better meals, better lighting. Then we've got new refined crafting stations in case we hadn't found them yet. So it looks like we're gonna get some big upgrades when we go visit that trader. So that's in the shops menu up here. Very, very useful. If you're curious about if it's worth it to head somewhere or what you need to make sure you grab while you're there and how many, you know, essence you're going to need when you do it. And then finally down here in the middle of your UI, you have hope. Hope is the drive and spirit of all realm walkers. So this is telling you basically the score is going up and unlocking new things for you as your equipment score goes up, as your estate score goes up, as your deeds go up. So as you do more in the game, your hope score is going up and the bigger that number, the better. Essentially, that's the thing to know. Another thing to be aware of is if you want your companions to be able to drop items off in your base. So when you interact with a basket, for instance, click this box right here survivor boom now my survivor my companion has the ability to put items in here so there she comes she's coming in and she's dropping off any items that make sense to put in that basket now if you're wondering okay there's a basket and later you'll unlock the ability to have a trunk instead is it worth it to put the time and effort into crafting the trunk i would say yes because the basket it only holds 15 items and then the trunk holds 40. so you've got a 40 item container here very, very handy for storing all kinds of different items and having access to it in one place. So you don't have to open multiple different containers. And then also you can hit this button here, move all items. So if you have stacks that match these stacks, it'll put them over there. Again, it's nighttime approaching. So this is where I said, this is a great time to queue up like some massive workload, like lumber, right? It takes a while to make lumber. So we could go like this and put, tell it to do 10. And it's going to take a while. And then any other tasks that take a really long time, like maybe you want to make a ton of leather or something, right? Things that take a while and then just hit sleep. And this is the one time that you can fast forward through the crafting process. When you wake up, all of this is done. Look at that. Boom. Save a bunch of time on crafting. So nighttime is a little bit of a blessing when it comes to crafting because it's the one time you can skip a massive crafting session if you have a you know some really long crafts that you want to do all right guys and that's going to do it for this video that is everything that you need to know to get started in nightingale if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask them down in the comments below or just say hi i read every single one again be sure to use the link in the description to grab the game if you haven't yet and massive shout out to my youtube channel members if you want to become a youtube channel member hit the join button below the video to find out more about the perks like behind the scenes footage access to a private discord channel and having your name appear at the end of every video. If you're not sure what to do next, check out one of the videos popping up on screen right now. I'll see you in the next one.